Thank you for listening to KSO Today, your free daily podcast from K-State Online. We'll talk Kansas State football, basketball, recruiting, and everything going on at KSO, your Rivals.com home for Kansas State athletics. This podcast will move rather quickly, so let's not waste any more time in kicking off another installment of KSO Today. We are looking at a Thursday here on January 16th, 2020. And on today's edition of KSO Today, we're going to focus in most heavily on K-State football and basketball recruiting. To reference a little coaching staff nugget you can find in our message boards today. Look at what you can find on the website in general right now and maybe a little bit more hoops talk as well. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, I love to share Kansas small town trivia. I want to give you a few facts about Hill City, Kansas. One, it's the county seat of Graham County here in Kansas. Two, its population was listed at 1474 back in the 2010 census starting to get notes about the 2020 census. I might have to participate. I don't know how that works. And third, and perhaps most importantly, it is one of the Tinch brand lo- branch locations in the state of Kansas uh, that People State Bank, one of our sponsors, has. So 17 ATM, 6 in Manhattan, 10 branch locations, one of which is in Hill City, Kansas, a People State Bank, one of our sponsors, along with Legacy Insurance. Really appreciate them and the time and support they give us. Uh, on the site, really the last four things we have ran are a hoops recruiting big board from Grant Flanders, a basketball report, report card from the Texas Tech game, also from Flando, uh, a tight end fullback 2021 recruiting preview from Derek Young, and then, of course, and one from Derek Young, not counting some of the stuff I've thrown up the last few days. I wanted to take a second and just kind of walk through each one of those items. One, to share a little bit of information for our listeners and not make this sound like an all-out commercial just for our site. I do want to give some information away and make this meaningful. But two, on the flip side, I, I do hope it advertises our site a little bit. And if you listen and you're not a subscriber and this stuff sounds interesting to you, and you take a look, that would be great. But uh, the biggest thing probably up right now is the latest Hoops Recruiting Big Board from Grant Flanders. I think it's version 4.0 of the class of 2020 that we're still looking at. K-State has now taken five players in that class with the transfer from UTEP as well as the four signed in the early period. Flanders has, if I pull it up, I don't want to give away too much. I think there's five or six names on this. I edited it. You'd think I'd remember. Um, The top two aren't terribly secretive, and I've shared their names on Twitter, but it's four-star junior college post Carlton Lingard out of Temple, Texas. Flanders has spoke to him quite a bit recently, has an update on him on the site within the last week, I believe. Uh, Another name on the list, very, very well-known out there, is Donovan Williams, a former Nebraska commit, four-star high school player, number 22 in the Rivals, number 122, big difference there, 122 in the Rivals, 150, 6'5", 175 out of Lincoln, Nebraska, North Star High School. There are more names on this list. Some of you have heard, some of you have not. Right now, there's five. We do think we're maybe missing one. There's probably at least one more target out there that we're not quite sure who it is. We're working on that. But I still think, and Flanders does too, if it's the right names, K-State will take as many as two more players in this class. That would be seven in this recruiting class. And I see some chatter on the board and questions, reasonable questions, good stuff. I'm not criticizing them, but asking things like, well, you know, who would we rather have, Carlton Lingard or Donovan Williams? Do we need another wing, what, you know, et cetera? Um, it's not an either-or situation. K-State would take both of them if they could. Um, it's not like taking Carlton Lingard would hurt their chances with Donovan Williams or vice versa. Now they may not get either. Both are four-star rated players with uh, a number of really good options in the P- at the P5 level who are looking around. So neither of these are anywhere near done deals. I want to make that very, very clear. They're, they're early in the process and will take a lot of work from K-State. But it's not a situation where the Cats are picking between these guys. They can, they can take all of them if they can land them and work to get them. There are more names beyond those two, like I mentioned. I'll kind of leave that for members of the site who are reading the story that Flanders writes on the big board or the message board as he shares more as far as prospects to watch beyond those two and how they fit in big picture. We'll take a second to talk about Flanders' report card from the Texas Tech loss a couple of nights ago, something he releases after every game. I just think he nails the grades pretty well. He, he might be a little harsh in the eyes of some or, or easy in the eyes of others, I guess. Um, but I think he nailed it pretty well. The only three-star grade he gave, three stars we defined as a slightly above average to average game, a positive impact on the game was Montavious Murphy. Totally agree with him getting three stars. Uh, 11.6 rebounds, 9 of 9 from the foul line. Turned it over a couple times, but Case 8 turned it over 20. So him doing it twice in 25 minutes uh, probably isn't the biggest problem in the world. It was three times in 25 minutes. So again, that, that is certainly an issue. Case 8 turned it over 20 times. 10 coming from their point guards, Cardi H. Otto, who had six of them, and David Sloan, who had four. But all those grades are up. Flanders does it after every game. It's interesting to see. Um, sometimes I have some quarrels with what he says. Sometimes I don't. Today, I think it was really, really good. I want to focus on a couple of things that Derek Young has written. 
One of these ran yesterday, but it's a series you'll continue to see throughout the offseason. And I'm doing a somewhat similar one, but really focused more on, you know, the players on the roster, not the ones recruiting. The point is, is it's a class of 2021 recruiting preview series he has done. Derek's already done quarterback, fullback, wide receiver. They're all linked within that story, so it's pretty easy to find. But uh, this one he did for tight end and fullback. Without going too detailed on it, the big target at that, those positions, I hope I'm saying his last name, is Thomas Fidone, or Fidone, it's called F-I-D-O-N-E, at a Council Bluffs, Iowa. This is a four-star Rivals 250 football player, number two player in the state of Iowa, number seven tight end in the country, 204. Another player um, who, for example, would take a lot of work, like those football kid, excuse me, basketball kids I referenced, uh, K-State's not leading for Thomas Fidone, in my opinion. It's going to take some work. Derek tells you a lot more about him and how he fits in that story. But that's a big name to watch. I will note it is possible K-State takes as few as one tight end slash fullback slash H-back in this recruiting class. If you look at the roster on scholarship, Mason Barda, Nick Leonard, Sammy Wheeler, Jax Deneen. These are all getting tight end fullback H-backs. Connor Fox, Christian Moore, Cody Stuffelbean, Will Swanson, two incoming freshmen. That doesn't count Logan Long, who played a bunch and could potentially go on scholarship at some point as much as they used him. So it wouldn't shock me, again, if they took as few as one, as Derek talked about. I should have referenced and one first because I could have gone basketball, 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 then finished football. That's my fault. Um, but I'll go back into Big 12 basketball at the end so it will work out. I just want to reference this as something new that Derek really is, you know, offered to do. Uh, he goes to about half the basketball games with us. We'll go to virtually everything home and away. When I say we, me, and Flando and that kind of stuff, Derek gets about half of which is more than half – Half is more than I ask him to. He is, you know, a football recruiting guy for us. So everything he does for basketball and otherwise is just him wanting to do extra work for us. But I think and one is interesting. He focuses on Montavious Murphy with the bright spot he provided for K-State in that loss. There were very few. It's a frustrating situation when you're 0-4 in the Big 12 and things don't look to be getting significantly better anytime soon. But I want to reference that story as something that's new on the site and worth looking at. As we get into Friday, you can typically expect a recruiting notebook from Derek Young every single Friday. I know we have a KSO show tonight at Tallgrass Tap House at 7 p.m., so we'll have that on the site tonight or tomorrow. Then, of course, this weekend we'll be talking a lot about the game with West Virginia. A brief look at Big 12 hoops. We'll start with West Virginia. Two nights ago, they hammered TCU 81-49 at home. That's the same TCU team that was 3-0 and in the Big 12. Um, kind of a weak 3-0 and for sure. They were fortunate to win at K-State and beat a couple other not very good teams. They were still 3-0. and The point is West Virginia hammered them. West Virginia, by far, uh, will be the best team K-State has played so far this year. I think they're significantly better than the Tech team that beat K-State by 14 the other night or the Texas team that beat K-State by 15 uh, in Austin. No, it was 14 um, recently. A couple other games last night. Oklahoma State fell to 0-4 in the Big 12 along with K-State with a 12-point home loss to a Texas team that's now 2-2 two two in the Big 12 off back-to-back -back wins over Oklahoma State and K-State. Uh, I'm shocked at how much the Cowboys are struggling um, with what they brought back from last year. Uh, at the class they are bringing in, excuse me, brought in. We'll see. I still, I still think they might be pointed upwards, but boy, it is hard to feel good about them right now, especially after what they did the last couple of years into this year. Iowa State's not particularly good either. They did lose at home to a good Baylor team. They lost by 13 and, and Hilton last night. They're just one and three in the league. So Oklahoma State, Iowa State, you know, Oklahoma got beat by Kansas pretty good the other day. There still are three or four teams as much as K-State is struggling. And I think K-State's struggling a lot. Um, there are still three or four teams that are probably similar to K-State. They're going to represent some opportunities to get wins against similar competition here in the Big 12. I will say without saying any names, uh, I posted something on the message board today about a possible coaching staff change that could be taking place. I'm not trying to be clickbaity. It's not Scotty Hazleton. It's not a huge name as far as a, a current active staff member. I don't want to scare you with it. They're trying to make you buy a subscription. But I do think it's interesting and something worth looking at if you already subscribed to us and want to click on that or sign up and look at it. I think that's all I have for today's edition of KSO Today on what's been a pretty fine Thursday so far, despite how cold it is. We'll be back again tomorrow as we are every day, Monday through Friday, during football and basketball season for KSO Today. One more thank you to People State Bank and Legacy Insurance for sponsoring us. Another sponsor, of course, is Tallgrass Tap House. We'll be there tonight. The family of Tallgrass Tap House, um, Harry's, uh, has been really, really good to us, of course. And Bourbon and Baker. That might be my favorite of all. I can't believe I forgot it. But we'll be at Tallgrass tonight at 7. Please come say hi if you're around. Until then, enjoy your Thursday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.